Okay, um, thank you very much, Frank, for a kind introduction. Uh, Charlie um, put out the um, opportunities that we have with memory sharing and software app applications, and Tybalt covered the um, opportunity that CXL brings for all of us. Uh, today, I'm going to cover the um, incremental uh, specification update on 3.1. Tomorrow, uh, if you guys join, I will cover uh, more activities within uh, OCP around CXL. So today is just a summary note. Basically, uh, as, as you guys know, uh, the interconnect, the job of interconnect is connecting compute and storage and memory uh, across uh, a large data center. And as you know, um, CXL covered, CXL 1.1 covered a local node. CXL 2.0 increased the capability through one layer of switching. And now with CXL uh, 3.0 and 3.1, uh, we are covering uh, fabric related and new topologies that are possible. This is just a summary note, and we try to peel, peel the onion a little bit. Charlie did talk about the advantage of CXL and coherence memory for the sake of uh, sharing memory. Um, it's important for us to build this capability on top of things that we already know. Uh, CXL relies on PCIe infrastructure for the physical layer and for programming for most of the parts. So uh, first do no harm starts there. What you already expect from PCIe, CXL offers. Then it offers two new protocols that are optimized for memory transfers uh, for cache coherent memory at cxl.cache and cxl.mem. When we put them all together, that's when we get to the converged memory concept. And once, once the accelerator and the CPU can work off of the same memory block, you can imagine data movement is reduced, energy consumed is reduced, time is reduced, and therefore, we, we gain performance. So all in all, the converged memory environment is, is basically the main key for ease of software programming. That's, that's a lot of friction that people might have. If you ask them to do new work, it will be difficult for it to be adopted. But then efficient movement is good for sustainability, is good for earth, is good for time, it's good for money as well. Okay, we did cover, and but I have a summary of the use cases that people have thought about um, CXL. Simply memory plug into one CPU or one, one GPU, or a new capability, a new medium, not necessarily DRAM, uh, can be uh, housed within a package and plug into the CPU independent of what the CPU natively offers. That is a capability that CXL brings in as well. And then using multi-ported memory expanders or switches, we can increase the scope of the capabilities to multiple hosts and larger memory pools as, as we talked today. So those are the current use cases. Yeah, uh, life doesn't stop. Uh, people's expectations grow when we produce something new and um, specifications need to respond to that as well. So CXL 3.1 is in response to some of the good feedback. To both talk about reliability and security as an example. So let's see what CXL 3.1 does in that regard. So the new features of CXL 3.1 can be summarized in three aspects. Uh, improvements in the fabric and extensions that is there so that we can create new topologies. And then uh, specific on the security and privacy and uh, uh, encryption, uh, there are uh, pieces that I will touch in a minute. And for the memory expander itself, there are some features added to align it with future uh, DDR6, for example. So on the fabric, um, uh, as we expect to connect more and more devices, uh, we expect them to be connected uh, through different topologies. So for that, um, new uh, routing requirements have been discussed and observed. And then once we have uh, multiple hosts connected to a fabric, 
being able to share uh, memory across those hosts have been an interesting concept. And that is done through the global integrated memory. And then devices, uh, if they can talk to each other directly, that would be nice. So they don't create choke points. And that's the direct peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer using CXL.mem is an issue. Now, putting it all together, um, some manager, uh, fabric manager, needs to uh, create and compose a system. So there have been enhancements in definition of the fabric manager as well. So um, to the left, you see uh, a system based on the normal hierarchy that we know of, a tree hierarchy. Uh, devices can talk to each other, but to do that, a CXL device or PCIe device using this hierarchy and this topology has to go up the tree uh, to some central point and then down to a device. Uh, to have efficient uh, data movement, it would be nice if we could uh, think of different topologies. Uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, HPC, uh, is growing in multiple dimensions, moving data east-west and not only uh, north-south have been important and topologies in the past uh, were drawn on paper, but now we can, in fact, implement them using uh, CXL 3.1 uh, fabric features. Um, so it would be nice that any device can talk to any other device, uh, not going, not having to go through a normal tree, which increase the congestion on the top uh, uh, branches of that tree. So how do we do all that? Uh, for example, uh, device to device uh, can have communication uh, through a switch without having to uh, bother uh, the CPU or the link that goes to the CPU. And that is done using a peer-to-peer -peer, um, .mem. And in that model, since it is CXL .mem, uh, it can be cached. So that's a new feature for CXL 3.1 that accelerators may touch and read or write uh, type three devices and cache the data that they receive uh, locally. Uh, that is done based on uh, port-based routing technique that the switch might offer. And um, it, uh, the devices need to be connected to the downstream port of an edge switch. Uh, similarly, if two hosts are connected to a CXL fabric uh, and they want to communicate uh, through memory, tr traditionally they have to go through another uh, fabric such as an ethernet or InfiniBand to move data between hosts. In a fabric that's built on CXL, uh, it has always been the question, uh, why couldn't we move data amongst uh, servers themselves, amongst the hosts themselves? And that capability was added to 3.1 uh, using a concept of global integrated memory. Uh, to do that, uh, what we need now is the uh, concept of unordered I.O. Uh, that software can move and push data from one host to another host. But just remember that that uh, data is not cached uh, because it is using uh, uh, the dot I.O., the un unordered I.O. Uh, semantic, not the dot .mem. Uh, again, uh, to manage all of this, we need a, a fabric manager. And to describe port-based routing capable switches, uh, the fabric manager semantics have been enhanced as well to uh, comprehend how you can disaggregate components and then re-aggregate them through composing and enable uh, dynamic capacity device concept in which um, memory can be allocated to different hosts uh, as the system is running. Um, Thibault mentioned the need for management and specifically security um, as a headwind. CXL 3.1 tries to shoot in front of that requirement and uh, a number of companies uh, work very hard to build a new security protocol on top of the available uh, T, trusted execution environment. 
and that is uh, part of CXL 3.1. Uh, you know that um, we, we've, we've had uh, the link level encryption as part of the uh, Integrity and Data en uh, Encryption, IDE, that covered data that goes on the link from one device to another device. Uh, what uh, TSP does, the, uh, the, the T security protocol, builds on top of it and builds on top of an already known uh, trusted uh, execution environment to eventually create a, an environment for confidential computing. So the data at rest uh, is encrypted, data in transit is encrypted, and once the uh, host or accelerator uh, understands all those topics, then they can compute and therefore have an enclave for uh, uh, basically workloads that require uh, confidential compute. Once we do that, then we could have trusted VMs do whatever they need to do and not have to share or expose their data to the hypervisor or the uh, virtual memory manager of a cloud service provider, for example. So they can be assured that their data is sovereign and protected. To do that, we need to do the configuration of these devices, encrypting the sensitive data, and all these devices need to be verified. Uh, so that is part of what the TSP uh, uh, section of CXL 3.1 covers. Other um, enhancements um, uh, basically uh, describe uh, how you would identify a device, what type of capability it has, uh, configure it, and then en enable the specific features that is consistent with what the uh, system administrator requires or the platform software requires. And once you do that, it is important to lock it so that uh, nobody else can uh, reconfigure and reassign things without the uh, administrator knowing. These are all the features that have been covered as part of CXL 3.1. And once we do all of that, then we can create this requirement of data address encryption, data in flight and transit encryption, and therefore eventually arrive at the uh, 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 um, computation done in enclaves for confidential compute. On the memory expander capability, um, being aligned with the future uh, uh, capabilities of DDR6, um, CXL 3.1 introduces uh, 32 new bits as metadata. Um, you know that two bits uh, are sufficient to define cache coherence in a form of a cache land being shared, exclusive, modified, or invalid. And that is uh, customary as part of metadata. But then we have uh, with 3.1, we have 32 bits of data that can be used for um, many uh, use cases. Different companies, different software uh, platforms uh, can choose to use those 32 bits to enhance the integrity of the data, either against faults or RAS or against um, uh, malus security. Um, and then some of these features are being discussed at uh, JEDEC for DDR6. So CXL 3.1 is um, uh, shooting in front of that puck as well. So uh, once we do that, we enable a little bit more resiliency and security that uh, customers and uh, workloads are requiring. And that's, that's how we can move up the chain and provide a better fabric uh, that is highly available and robust uh, for all the expansion capabilities that uh, we expect of a uh, fast fabric. So uh, putting it all together, uh, CXL 3.1 is a superset uh, with new features over CXL 3.0. And these are backward compatible with earlier uh, specifications. This table is trying to show that. Therefore, when people are building a new uh, device, 
new capability, uh, they can in fact um, start with CXL 3.1 feature set. Uh, it is true that uh, not all processors or not all devices support all of the features, but since the spec is there and there is a very methodical way of describing which features a particular device is offering through discovery and through capability bits, it is quite all right to uh, pick some of the features that are 3.1 and still use it in a system that is mostly uh, CXL 2.0 because it is backward compatible. And that device uh, can, can live through another generation and be forward compatible with future processors and future systems. Um, uh, people are doing that already, picking up 3.1 spec uh, features and testing them through POCs, even with uh, CXL 2.0 or even 1.1 systems, uh, because uh, through software magic, you can test them out, learn from it, and be ready for when the full system is aligned with CXL 3.1. That's basically my recommendation for people not to have, have to wait until everything's ready before you start. You really need to start now and align with it uh, when everybody's uh, 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 compatible. Uh, but basically, I'm summarizing by saying that uh, CXL specification continues to evolve to meet uh, all of the usage models. And for that, CXL 3.1 um, has offered new fabric capabilities, um, added features for um, trusted uh, environments, and uh, has increased capabilities for memory expanders. That's basically a summary of CXL 3.1 uh, spec. Uh, modifications and enhancements. Tomorrow, we will go much deeper in how uh, these will be applied to systems and how um, OCP members, Open Compute Project members, are taking advantage of CXL as a technology to build larger and larger systems. And there's great collaboration going on as part of uh, three major work streams, uh, CMS, Composable memory systems, um, uh, extended cable and, and connectivity work stream, and, and uh, data center ready modular hardware system uh, that touches on shapes and module sizes and dimensions and mechanical features of these systems that are CXL enabled. Uh, putting it all together, eventually going to racks, large racks. And a Rack and Power is another project very active within OCP. So we will cover some of the, these things tomorrow. If there are any questions, I'm 